Let us get started. So who has the first question? You'll see you have your hand there. So I'm going to bring you the mic. And you will tell who you want to answer the question. Or you, or you can... Pointed to all three because it's generic, and I have three questions, but I will make them quick. Uh, one, if we go to a cashless society, does that mean the money we have in the bank or elsewhere it has no value, or is it just cash that ends up having no value? Well, I saw it as the paper money losing its value, but I, I didn't really see it as losing its worth, if that makes sense. In other words, you, the paper is useless. However, if you have, I tried to find out, does that mean I could take $100 and put it in the bank and then throw the money away? And I know I have it in the bank, right? Um, and I only was able to get an answer twice and they were, they contradicted each other. So I don't really know. I just know that cash as we know it is a means of Exchange that's gone, it's totally plastic. Okay, uh, We're all not. I think this is a new job. Oh. Um, oh. Is it on? <coughs> oh, there it is. Um, all of you have basically said we need to start paying attention and take action. Can you be uh, more specific to what the ordinary average Joe like myself, what do you mean by taking action? I, I would say taking, maybe I shouldn't have said action, take responsibility and know, yeah, you're one vote, but make sure that you're educated about where you're, how you're going to vote. Doesn't, we're not pushing in, I'm not, any of us, pushing an agenda. We're just saying maybe in the past you've sort of sat out some elections or you haven't gotten real involved or whatever. And at least what I'm feeling is we can't let one person sit out. There's, there's an energy shift occurring. You guys are on the forefront of it. You understand a lot more energetically about what's happening. And whether, whether it's totally just voting in politics, I think it's way more than that. I think it's actually others around you are going, hey, I think the world's going crazy. And then you're going, well, you know, there's this energy thing going on. And trying to explain and get other people, you know, I said in one part that we need more teachers and mentors. Hello, all of you out there. You each know two people. And at least one of them is probably going to say something over the next year, like, what is going on? And then offer what you seem to think is going on. Okay. And then what does it mean when a country goes into default, <coughs> what happens? Oh, okay. Well, let me, hey, can, I, I, can I work my way up to that? Let me cover, cover all three of the questions. First thing about the paper money, we're already pretty much a, a, a moneyless society. Because most most banks, according to the size, most banks don't have thirty to fifty thousand dollars in cash in the bank. Period. So if you burglars go in, they don't get, they don't get a whole lot of money. Um, that that that's what. Then your second question about when you say how to get involved. First thing is vote. People vote. Okay. The other thing, if if you have a problem with a city service or an issue, make that phone call. And I don't know if y'all are familiar with the website next door. It's a community, community site. There was a game room opened up in our um, neighborhood. And they just, they, they wore, wore the next door out talking about, call the police, call the police, call the police. And I will tell you what, uh, the next thing I know, they are taking those, uh, closing, closing the place down. The woman wrote in, she said, when one moves in, if they see that the neighbors aren't doing anything, others come in. But when they see that the neighbors will make a stink, it stops. So it may seem like a little bitty simple thing, but put it, put it, but deal with it. Now, if you had a third question there that I was really supposed to answer. Your third? Oh, oh, oh the default. Um, the, the default actually happens in terms of if you owe me money, you owe Phil money, you owe Chuck money, when you default, you're basically saying, I'm not going to pay you back. It's basically the same as if an individual goes and declares bankruptcy because it's going to shut down your ability to borrow money. So if you're talking about a country, you're talking about uh, the roads not being paid back. In some of these cases, these people use uh, used the money to get food, um, to, to dig wells, to get things that aren't producing revenue. 
when you are talking about a city defaulting, um, what that does is that kills their ability to go and borrow money. If you have citizens that are getting their retirement out of that city, that the city is supposed to be paying pension plans, they get to renegotiate. They can, they can cut your pension in half, um, they can cut it out totally, or they may just decide you can't get insurance. Um, they may decide um, you can't, they can't get another fire wagon because they can't borrow money. Um, it, it's just basically, you didn't pay your bill, so nobody's willing to loan you any money. The difference is in, bank, in bankruptcy after um, seven or so many years, um, you can at least start your, your, your credit back. But when a city does it, there are so many things that are going to shut down, like uh, sewer treatments are not going to be updated. Water purification is going to not get updated. Police forces can't keep up with the current salaries. So they, get, they don't lose police officers. They end up hiring the bottom of the barrels that don't carry anything about brutality. Am I going to answer it? As an aside, Roy used to be a bank examiner. How many years ago? Well, that's about 30 years ago. Okay. Thank you. Um, we know that our nation was a nation of destiny and founded on metaphysical and spiritual principles. What I want to know is how does this factor into and what will happen when we get through this mark? And will we get through this mark? Will we still retain destiny or are we totally screwed it up? <laughs> all right, Pastor. Let me just go ahead and go there. <coughs> go there. For we know that all things work together for good for them that are called according to his purpose. Um, this is actually, we are actually getting our house in order so that we can, and, and it's almost, I'm going to call it a fresh start. And when I talked about bankruptcy, that's the thing. Once you get out of bankruptcy, you got this fresh start. So we are actually going to have people that's going to understand, okay, we decided we were going to go the um, Johnson, Kennedy, Obama, Democratic way. But then we need that whatever we have a bunch of people wanting the Trump way. So now we have enough Trump people, and this is not political, enough Trump people that is seeing Here's the problem with our way of thinking. But we have some Democratic people going, this is the problem with our thinking. So we're actually given that fresh chance and that fresh start. So I'm actually looking at a better, more unified uh, system coming out of this and a lot more um, cohesiveness. What we are going to actually have to deal with that um, is going to really come back to the spiritual trying part is more in this election than I've seen in any others. Um, Democrats have taken a very, very personal approach to doing things. Republicans have taken a very um, um, personal approach to doing things. And they have not had a regard to how their friends were taking it and how their family were taking it. So you're going to have a lot of family healing and friendship healing that's going to have to go on that is even deeper than the political healing. Did I answer it? I would, I would add that from a metaphysical standpoint, um, just looking at the age that's ending, the Piscean age, it's a very warlike, aggressive energy. And if you look over the last 2,000 plus years, I think history would bear that out. Whereas the Aquarian energy is more soothing, calming, peace uh, oriented. So uh, I would think that once we get over this mixing period, uh, purging, whatever you want to call it, that we should see in the future a uh, uh, return over, you know, the entire planet to a more uh, conscious of one another type energy, loving energy, concept. And I just want to add to that that um, you'll see more people having spiritual experiences. And that's why I said, um, you know, take a step back out of third step, you know, and observe, meditate, or connect, develop that relationship. It's a two-year that also means to have a relationship with you and your God self. It's really there, and I'm getting from the higher frequencies. Really open up to it. Really uh, take that time and, and just, just soak it up. Soak up those energies, just like sunlight. And you'll see more people talking about those things, but you'll also see, you know, it pulls the stuff up. So you may say 
you know, some more drama or some more chaos of the explosions or on a global level, things going on. Don't forget who you are. You know, develop that relationship with you. Really use your spiritual tools this year. You've been working on them so hard on a collective level. We all have. And I'm just, I'm hearing them, you know, I'm hearing them as on the higher vibrations. They hear your thoughts, they hear, you know, your wishes, your hopes, your feelings, and they're wanting to really connect. Those energies are wanting to connect with you. Well, then, then part of my question was, will we still retain our destiny? You are your destiny. Yeah, I think this is actually a very, very uh, integral part of achieving that. Mm -hmm. you, you can't ascend and rise. Uh, vibrationally or however else you want to look at it uh, with all this junk still in your backyard it, it's got to be cleared out I, 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 totally, I totally agree someone once told me it's not God punishing the country or uh, the world it's actually God going yeah it's about time let's do this but first we got to clean up all this here you got to fix your room up before you can come out and have dinner so we have a question. Um, my question is about the 2018 uh, elections, the midterm elections. What's that going to look like? Is, are the Democrats going to uh, do well in the House and the Senate? Is it more of a balance? And is this also part of the you know, you know, getting involved and taking action and all that? I see a lot of collaboration there. You know, I do see people picking up and leaving. You know, I saw energies leaving. And it's a very interesting opportunity for souls that can and incarnated to have some of these experiences and these monumental, you know, movements that are happening. Um, you'll see the earth reflecting them. You know, you're seeing politics reflect them. Uh, but again, what I'm stressing to people is let it happen in you. You know, as well, be be conscious of that going on and what's going on with you. You know, if someone's blaming out there. You know, where am I judging myself? You know, where where does it where is it on that micro level too? But in 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 your question. You know, in that, um, I think they're going to cooperate. I think it's going to, there's going to be friction there, but I think we'll see an interesting, just like two plates rubbing together, you know, form something, you know, going up. And this is what I think that it's bringing things up that people don't want to talk about, that need to be talked about. More negotiations. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually, you know, the, the blue wave might be a bit <laughs> over the top, uh, expectation-wise, but I do think that there's a balance in coming up. It seems so out of balance. And love your animals. I'm hearing those migrations too, and those that have crossed over, I thought, oh yes, okay. They're saying, oh, you know, um, music. Listen to music, the music within yourself, connect to the vibrations, and love your animals. They're really taking a lot of the brunt of a lot of the shifts, as you see that, and they, you know, uh, they're a gift. Love them, let them love you. You know, see that reflection there. And they're very wise. You'll get a lot of intuitive things from your pets. I've, I've noticed with the young kids, too, now, and my son, too, who's 18 years old, he's got me involved in investing in cryptocurrencies. Oh, yeah. And I already have a girlfriend who invested in Bitcoin. She's already a millionaire because mm -hmm. she just felt like I was telling her to do this. And, and all over the world now, you know, people are becoming very... Um, profitable from this and so I'm curious what you feel because I, I invested started investing I figured if, you know if you can't beat them join them you know so I figured the only thing I'm going to add to that and I think I'll let Chuck in because I think they're all connected into that is that I almost yeah. see two levels existing simultaneously like dimensions but they don't affect they don't harm each other in some way I'm not sure about the goal and that if like one's doing well one isn't or you know but um I, I, I just see pictures of like streams. You know how you have water on top and you have like underground, there's a stream. I see things kind of existing simultaneously and uh, somehow that, you know, working well. So I think people could profit maybe from both. So you're saying it is a good thing. Uh, you know, That's right. This is becoming, mm -hmm. they're saying it's a way of the future. It's basically right. banks are getting involved in it now mm -hmm. because it literally replaces something like Western Union that takes four days to actually get transactions through, through, and they can do 1,500 transactions for Ripple, which I invested in, and it's starting to go off the charts mm -hmm. uh, because banks are now getting involved in it because they can actually internationally exchange monies, 1,500 transactions in a minute. You know, so. What is she talking about? And these are companies. Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency is an electronic Bitcoin. currency. Bitcoins and cryptocurrency. And you connect it with your bank. 
And what it's doing, and this is what the good thing I think that it is doing, is it's all these young kids are getting involved and they're becoming millionaires because of it. All the programmers, they're mining it, you know, and, um, and it's, it's about solving problems and it's about being decentralized so we don't depend on the Federal Reserve System. So that's why a lot of these young kids said, hey, we don't like what's going on in the government, so we're going to have our own currencies. And now, boom, you know, some of these things are a fluke, these coins like Dogecoin, and, um, and they invest in water wells. And, you know, they're all starting to go up. It, a lot of them are. So it's very interesting to watch it. Well, you know, Roy, you have talked about how um, things are happening now because we didn't deal with it, you know, in all these other presidencies. And, um, Timothy, you mentioned that we're going to have more bipartisan stuff, that people are going to get a little more negotiation. But that's the spiritual part of it. Yeah. You know, that's the whole thing. You know, it was supposed to clash and, you know, oh, yeah. And said, yeah, keep moving up. That's so people my, have been asking for it. They're, yeah, they're exactly. It. So my question, have any of you sensed, and I don't think it was specifically said, that coming in 2020, we might be getting some moderates that are rising up that can unify the Democrats and Republicans so we don't have Democrats for eight years, Republicans for eight years. We can have more cooperation. Do any of you sense that for 2020? Um, go ahead. Go ahead. It's not going to wait to take that long. It's, all, it's already started. Okay, because, because the, 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 the fighting on each side the people that are coming in, and you're going to start seeing this in the, in the next election, they're not going to be fighting. They're going to be more about bringing things together. And we've already started seeing resignations coming that says, I can't side, I can't deal with this side. But you're also having um, people that haven't been um, practicing what they preach, sort of say, um, that have been exposed and that have, 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 that have had to resign, which is coming out of the sex scandals. We have the governor that just, not, not in the state of Texas, that just said, yeah, I had an affair and I won on family values, you know. So, so you're actually, you know, however you, you get exposed, you're going, you, you are actually being replaced by someone that is not into the fighting. They are more into the reconciliation. Yes. Did I answer that? Yes, you okay. did. What about the DACA kids? Um, the one thing that bothers me the most is is playing them like they're a poker chip, which you know that's kind of stating a political opinion. I don't really mean to do that, but the uh, as, as you were just bringing, as Roy was just saying, so many people are promising one thing, and then when it gets down to it, then they start this back and forth, and they're arguing again. I mean, three days ago we had the president saying, "Bring me a, something, and I'll sign it." Out. And then yesterday, you know where that went. So um, I still feel like it's going to work out for them. I guess maybe I'm just sort of like Timothy, believing the good energy's got to run out over this. But I've, uh, you know, watching what's being done with the Haitians and, and the uh, Salvadorians and all, I'm going, I'm starting to lose my faith here, and the good always wins out in the end. So I, I, I don't know. I don't have a straight feel on that. Um. The key thing, and, and I give Donald Trump credit for this, there's a lot of stuff people keep ignoring, keep ignoring. He's like, it's your, whether you like it or not, this is here. Okay? And so when you start talking about these these different issues, they are going to be dealt with. But before, you, before we can deal with them, somebody has to say, this issue is back on the table. And it talks about immigration, it's talking about the tax code, um, it's talking about a lot of stuff. Okay, so yeah, it, 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 it's, going, it's, going to be de it's going to be dealt with because unless it comes to the surface, we can't deal with it. And I'm actually looking at a lot of things getting dealt with, even, even though it's going to go years out, the fact is some stuff is not going to be able to, some of the new stuff is not going to be able to successfully move forward until some of the old stuff is dealt with so everything is totally going to become new and revamped okay our, our old our old system people were so entrenched that it was kind of like okay my house has a, a crack in the, in the siding so what i'm going to do i'm not going to patch that crack up 
I'm just going to put something to cover it up. I may pour a vine, I may put some other siding up there, but I'm not going to deal with the crack. And that's, that's the way this country has dealt with problem after problem. It's like all we have to do is get through one, administ one um, a congressional session after another after another. We don't have to fix it. We just leave it for the next person. Uh, it's just been getting a mess and a mess. And in the late part of the cryptocurrency, if we didn't have countries like America, especially, in so much debt, people would not be afraid of the dollar falling. We wouldn't have to deal with cryptocurrencies. I wanted to add something real quick. It came through your consciousness here. Um, is that remember that it's all consciousness, and when you put your attention on it, and you put the attention here, you calm it. You see, so instead of, you know, just doing this and being a good finger pointer, which I've noticed there's a lot all over the country, <laughs> you know, uh, look at who's pointing. You know, see what it is, you know, because as you do that, it's not just, you know, uh, to tell you it just to grow, but it, it's part of our own consciousness because it's, it's, it's like the water. You know, you put your hand in and it moves, right? You know, put your attention on the process and start seeing it move, you're part of it. You know, uh, that's kind of your, what, your soul's way of voting? <laughs> you know, putting your putting your energy in there. So as you were saying that, I was seeing, you know, these two oh, the polarities here. Put your attention here and embrace it, observe it, and you'll start to see, you know, those waves start to, you know, come up, but it comes up on a, what, a higher level. Does that make sense? You had talked about the uh, Constitution earlier, and uh, if we were going to get more towards the Constitution or away from it, uh, at the beginning of 2017, they were talking about having a Constitutional Convention. Do you think that will uh, come about? I feel there's a lot of pressure being put to go there, yes. Um, because you hear not just the president, but a lot of people in government criticizing various amendments and uh, you know, how we need to modernize and bring it up to the current date and wording and all that. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think there would be a huge political backlash for that. Um, but I, I do think you might see it proposed, yes. Okay. As a quick aside, um, I'm not sure which month we have a we'll have a lecture on uh, cryptocurrency sometime after March. So uh, if you, who knows of Quinn Acre is going to do that. So it'll be on not just Bitcoin, but on Steam it and a number of other so things. Really so, and that I mostly sketch. I talked to him about that because me, I said, do you know anybody that can really explain cryptocurrency honestly? Because I've heard all the presentation, I haven't heard anybody that can clear up every question for us. Here's our next question. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It was a very interesting presentation. I observed a recurring thread through each of your um, discussions of a phenomenon I would call deferred maintenance. That deferred maintenance is catching up with us. And it doesn't take care of itself, but it has to be acted on. And thank you for reminding us of this. Thank you so much. The three of you were great. Um, I have a question for you. I have a little confusion about you know, when destiny has things coming our way, our best way is just to surrender to the stream and go along because whatever's coming is meant to be there in order to polish us like a rock, right? But when you guys are saying, no, stand up and take action or position or, you know, whatever, are we supposed to go now like the salmons, you know? Um, Okay. Against the currency and buttheads or I think it's a, I, mean, I need to kind of know, you, I just go along or do I tough them? Well, I think that's what's caused this, actually, is everybody just sort of riding along with the stream. And um, I think where I, would, where I would put it is, or how I would put it is, you know, from a metaphysical perspective, then we all say, that every outcome to every situation exists. The one you pull into your reality, though, is the one you manifest. 
So I think we've been ignoring the truth. I think we have been just sort of like, yeah, we got to kind of like the law. And we realize, oh my God, we're on the street we don't want to be in here. So we do need to turn the around. Um, I, I, you know, I guess I'm the most doom and gloom one of the three of us. But I really feel like the country can get away from us if we don't start paying better attention to what's happening. Because we've been ignoring it for too long, like Roy like, well, is. No, no, I'm sorry. Do you go into the street? No, I'm talking about our individual lives. Your individual lives. Follow the truth. Okay, I was I was going to say you are the stream. That's where your your action needs to go first. As well as you are that stream. When you start coming from that perspective that you're the stream, then you'll know what you what your step is. So just follow. Connect with your flow. Connect with the with your with your flow within you. And as you start doing that, you carry that with you. It's like, in other words, follow your heart. But run it through your heart. Don't just do it through your mind. Run it all the way through your being. What, hap what, happen what happens when a, when a string hits a, a dam? It doesn't go any farther. It just kind of keeps building up. So run it through all of you so it doesn't just jam up. Does that make sense? You might swim upstream on some issues, and you might go with the flow of others. Okay. Yeah, process it all the way through. Bring it, bring it through. Like what you the principles that you're taught here. Bring them, bring them through here. You'll, you'll lose a lot of your fear. You'll feel clear. You'll see clear on your next step, whether it's with the flow or not with the flow. I just don't want to go out of wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, our heart, our information, our higher self is. Awesome, but our mind is in the way. Well, that's the little dam I was talking about. Yes, yeah, so things yeah. start to, I think <laughs> things start to back up. Do you this is more to this, or do you just. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go against my destiny. You okay. are your destiny. Yes. What is aimed for that first? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I thought that you was are your destiny. destiny. Okay. You're, still, you're still finding it right there. And as you, as you process it all through that, You'll, you'll, you'll know that next step because you'll be coming from from your destiny. From your heart. Mm -hmm. From who, who you are. You're, you're, you know. You're the great ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
conspiracy science and such. Yeah. 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 It's, no, it's not denigrating the question at all. I'm just being honest. That, you know, I read that all the time. I'm and I'm glad ignorance are. I'm, I'm a follower, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I've got nothing. We're good. So, since all three of you were here last year, um, I, I want to frame this in the uh, context of I'm not trying to make any of you look bad or discredit you or anything, but is, are there any predictions that you remember making last year that you were maybe spot on, or maybe a few that that were off the mark? And if um, and if you could maybe talk a little bit about some of the, like maybe unseen forces at the time that maybe interfered with your prediction. Uh, well, Phil next to shred these when we walk out. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, Korean, the Korean out. missile launch, I think I mentioned last year. You did? Uh-huh. Um, and, and also Japan, when they started aiming it toward Japan. I think all of us last year talked about this coming election being pretty wild. Two or three of us hit Trump. We all said, believe it or not, that's where we're getting going to win. And sure enough. Now, but what were some of the factors that, you know, for some of the stuff that you saw maybe like right work. after January? I mean, can you talk a little bit about some of the factors that, so like, oh, I didn't see that coming, you know, at least when it was at the, at the beginning of January. I remember so clearly because I know, wow, he's kind of negative, but no. Chuck said last year, oh, when I start thinking of 2017, well, I kind of, okay, this is with my vocabulary. I just see everything so gloom and so tough, and oh, it's so negative. A lot of things are going to happen, and it's going to be a tough one. And it was. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> be here, be here next year. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I did it happen. It's been a time. Um, it was like the, the longest decade I've ever been through. Um, I'm going to be real honest with my predictions. I don't look back over them because I let other people give me uh, feedback. <laughs> Nothing personal. I get bored. <laughs> So they can't read my own writing, okay, that's... That's why I type mine. My question is, uh, as a result of all these uh, inquir inquiries, these investigations, what are the chances that Trump will get impeached, and then if he were impeached, what are the chances that uh, he would have to step down and Pence would take over, I guess? You know, I didn't see him getting impeached, and I thought a couple of times, he, you know, they might really, really go for that. Um, I didn't see it. It's, it could still happen, but I didn't see it. I think today I was more concerned about someone trying to assassinate him. You know, I was picking on those collective energies. Um, and it's usually around uh, transportation. Uh, I think last year I was picking up a, a, in a car, and this year I'm kind of sensing something around an uh, airplane. But, um, you know, I'm seeing the consciousness shift, and I see a lot of those things start to fade. You know, they're like, you know, strong currents set out there. Things, things like that. Um, I don't particularly see him being impeached, and I don't necessarily know that he needs to be impeached. And, and the reason I say that is because his impeachment would create such a divisiveness uh, because it, it would be more involved in my side versus their side. But here's what I do feel may happen more than anything that would cause him to end his term, is if all of a sudden um, something happened that he didn't like, and please forgive me for this, but he can be so single focused mm -hmm. on things. Oh yeah, if you, if you walk in and you told him you didn't like the color of his shoes, he would stop running the country to come after you for not liking his shoes. I should actually see him standing up and saying, Congress is doing this, Senate is doing this, I'm not getting anything done, and he would storm off like a kid in a tantrum. So I could see him I could see him more resigning than I could see him being impeached. And I, I didn't totally get impeached either, but I felt a change. That was what I was going uh, for when I said the Russia thing is real. Uh, and it's going to have a 
profound fact has an uh, effect on us as all the facts roll out. And it, it's, um, it's much deeper and much more involved than just what you and I are hearing so far. I feel like whenever I look at some of the members of Congress or the investigators on television, I just keep getting the sense that the, behind the facade we're seeing, they're going, you got no idea what we know. This is so big. It's almost, I almost feel they're intimidated by the depth and precision of everything that happened. And again, I really believe that it's based on the fact that the majority of those involved in this figured we wouldn't pay any attention, and if we did, we'd go, oh, come on, are you kidding? Seriously, that couldn't possibly happen. I mean, I know I did that. I felt that. Do I think having the Pence become president? I just threw up my mouth a little, sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, that was an editorial. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that it could be worse, so maybe it would be better. But I, you know what I really feel, and I kind of didn't want to say this, but I will. Um, I felt like the whole group would be gone if they go. It's, it's like the whole unholy trinity just the trifecta of bad goes away. So I really thought, you know, if you really want me to go out there on the left, I would say the reason I keep bringing a constitutional crisis, I, I filtered it out for tonight, but I'll give us the same. I really think that, that somehow or another they're going to try to declare the election null and void and we go back to square one and start over. That's really what, in my absolute deepest gut, that's what I think. And that's not going to go so well with all of us. We'll see. You remember that. <laughs> I'm going to jump in and ask the question for me and kind of for Pat as well. And I just want to go back and reiterate that uh, almost two years ago, we, with short notice, had to find another place. And this was the place we eventually found. And Pat says it's one of the associate ministers. And I always just tell him very simply that this party was one of the top three on, on my list. But before I could contact them, Pat contacted me. And it was in a short conversation she made us a, a better offer than I was going to offer, you know. And so, and the rest is history. And we've talked a lot. And of course, they've been on six month lease here for a while and paying very high rent. And are, are negotiating, I don't know if have you all negotiated or have talked to uh, First Jefferson yet or not? Yeah, yeah, and a couple of other ones. We don't know. We just let it Okay. Fresh. Do y'all, with just from the total intuitive standpoint, do you get anything for Satori? We're linked now, and we're just kind of an association that we feel like we're part of Harley. So there's amazingly supportive of us. That's a big part. Have you seen anything, anything in the coming year or thereafter for us? That's my selfish question. I'm here to ask a question for me. And I, I really feel like you're going to be here next year. I mean, that's my gut. What, what's your choice? A couple of well, places in there's, yeah, they're looking at a lot of different places because they know that eventually the medical group that owns this will eventually turn it into an He'll move. when the building costs to come down. Yeah. Yeah, I see you moving. But that can change. Okay. Yeah, as you were talking, I saw it soft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll find it. I think you still might move, but you've got That's the kind of way it's been because we have all the these possibilities. So I'm just curious if yeah, you see possible so it's mm -hmm. you know divided. I'm just getting a bigger place. A, a, a bigger place because I am not only for, for facilities but also for seating because there's getting ready to be more people and you're going to need more room. Yes. I mean, um, it's, yeah. I mean, you will you will know before the end of the year what is going to but I'm going to tell you, chill, because it's going to be really good. Thank you. Could, you. could you be looking for a place that has more nature around it? Well, one of the places we're considering is the uh, Unitarian Church on Sandy Lane, and it's in a park I said. Yeah. It's a real nice place. I've seen more nature around, around it, more space. Mm -hmm. And to tell everybody, too, that years ago in the Genesis days, nobody ever made any predictions of all the panelists for Genesis, except for Roy Lee. And he predicted we'd find a new place, and next year we did. So, just to put a little red bell in there. So, but thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think we just instituted no process.
proselytizing rule. <laughs> talk about the pack of worm rule. You know, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And what time does your service start? 10.30 on Sunday, but you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> That's true. My well, boy's never done a service there, so you can talk to him about that. That's a good idea. I bet everybody showed if they thought Roy's good. I, I promise you, I've been to a couple of Roy's sermons, and we've had fun. That's all I can say. Anyway. So if anybody ever wants to hear that story, I'd love to tell it. So um, we're slightly on overtime, but if anybody wants one or two more questions, we'll wrap up to our door prize drawing and our announcements and then closing meditation. So I guess everybody's. I guess we've got one more question. Quick. Is the turmoil that you mentioned from Japan to LA, is that related, earthquake related to that San Francisco? Yeah, there is. Yeah, it, I, I got the feeling that it was something there related. To Geographically, you know, I don't know if the fault lines are running through there, but also I think the bombings over there are, are shaking something up. But it seems like it's it's very close in, in time frame. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're just gonna unless <laughs> one last chance. Okay, uh, we got all the questions covered. And first of all is the obligatory Satori thank you, putting your hands together.